Today, it's styled components in React. All right, so we have a brand new project loaded up with Create. By the way, this video is broken into two sections. I've got a code demonstration at the beginning, and I have a theoretical kind of semi-explanation at the end. Um, if you don't want either one, I'll have this, the timestamps down below. If you want to jump straight to the explanation, um, you can go ahead and jump to this timestamp right here. And if not, the code is right here. Great React app. Um, this is just the npx command. Uh, maybe I'll put a video in a card or something showing you how to get at least to this point, but this is pretty basic. Um, so I want to start here just to start from absolute ground zero, how to go from you have no embedded styling, you just have exactly what Create React app will give you, um, and then go directly into styled components. So now that we see that we have a project, um, it's loaded up and it's running, let's go ahead and stop it. And uh, please excuse me while I pull up some notes. I got them on a third monitor up here. Um, all right, so to install styled components, we're just going to install the library. npm install, we're going to save it, styled components. And go ahead and wait for that to finish up. And all right, cool, look at all that awesome output. Back up, just do standard npm start. All right, cool, so we just added the package. We didn't change anything. Um, we haven't changed any code yet, so we're still here. All right, let's drop back out of this, open up Visual Studio Code. Um, you should be able to read all this. Let's go ahead and cut all this out. Um, I'm including this just so that you can see um, exactly what I'm starting from and how, because when I first got into styled components and CSS and JS and all the libraries and everything, it was very, um, it was very intimidating. I, it, was, it was such a huge shift in the way that I used to think about things that I, um, I wanted something to really kind of hold my hand through the process. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm providing here. Um, even though some of this may be a bit elementary, it's nice to see exactly what you're coming from. Um, uh, again, you, so you can have that kind of handholdy experience. Hand -holdy experience. Um, all right, so we deleted everything that uh, Create React App gives us out of the box, and what we're the first thing we're going to do is going to actually import um, something called the styled um, template literal. Um, don't really worry about that; it's just under the styled name. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so we're going to import styled from um, styled components. And in case anybody is interested, um, I'm basically my notes for this video. Um, are really just the styled components documentation. It's pretty good stuff. So if you have any questions when you're going through this or what's possible, I would highly recommend just starting with the documentation rather than going to try some article somewhere else. It's really good stuff. Um, okay. All right. So let's do that. Let's pop. So now that we're back to a blank canvas, the first thing that I'm going to do is, oh, I don't know. Um, let's just create a div. Um, throw some text in it. Hi, I'm new here. Okay, cool. And we see that that pops up, pops up centered, um, because we're already, remember, um, I'm leaving this here for, for, on, for on purpose. I'm leaving the pre-installed or the pre-written, um, styles here on purpose just to show you how flexible styled components is, is that you can use it side by side with CSS. You don't have to automatically go get rid of that stuff. Um, okay. Anyway, um, all right. So we've done that. So we have a div. We have some content in it, and we're gonna throw it in there. Pretty basic. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new styled component. I'm going to call it styled div, um, and then I'm going to say, uh, let's see. I'm going to take advantage of that styled template literal that we pulled in, or at least the styled function. Um, and then I'm going to say do dot div. Again, all this will come out in just a moment. Um, we're going to do two back ticks, and then that's the end of the line. So I just that's just kind of muscle memory for me. Already this looks really strange, but that's the boilerplate to get it out of the way. And then from here we can do some CSS. So color um, blue, and from there. That should be okay. No errors, no errors. Seems kind of strange, okay, but things are happy. Um, all right, at that point, we're going to, because this is a styled div, 
and we named it style div and so this is essentially it might not look like it but this is a component this is a, a function component I'm gonna copy the style div name and I'm gonna drop it right there and then so our text should be blue it didn't work I don't know why it didn't work but our text still showed up so that's strange okay I'm not very smart um, figured out what the issue was kinda did this off camera um, blue does not need to be in quotes yes I forgot CSS basic basic CSS contact uh, syntax and we're doing a styled components demo anyway okay moving on so we have a new styled div functional component um, we're using what is called a template literal uh, more on that probably in another video later on maybe I'll go into it at the end of this video um, here's the kicker though color blue this is straight just CSS syntax this is just CSS but we're including it in our style div and instead of using a normal div like this in the middle of your JSX I'm just using style div like a component again this is a component use it in the JSX throw whatever content you want here and then the CSS styles get applied that's it this is very basic but that's it all right just to prove a point I'll go ahead and save that and see that things pop up you can even nest thing just to show you yet again this is just regular JSX um, like I said doing a handholdy experience because it really threw me for a loop the first time that I saw it too just a div what okay and see the nested one is blue as well because the color down here is blue so I'm saying that this is just CSS but if it's just CSS we should be able to use the same selectors and scopes and that sort of thing right yes we can so if we're inside of style div and we have a nested div can we then only scope styles to the nested div within this style div that we created I don't know how many times I just said div there but anyway to answer the question yes we can we can scope styles we can have scoped styles using the regular CSS selectors that we've always been able to use in CSS but we can do that inside of styled components so I'm going to say um, div and Let's see, I'm going to make the color green. And so any nested divs inside of style div are gonna have a color of green or they're gonna have whatever else it is that we did here. So even if we wanted to do like a border, um, whoops, can't type. Uh, we wanna do like a solid one pixel black border. Anything, anything is here, okay. Cool, so enough of that. So I have one more example. So instead of just playing with straight text and divs and that sort of thing, let's step it up just a little bit and do a button. Again, this is just to reinforce how much of this is just another component. This is literally another functional component. Um, that's really kind of what I'm trying to drive home here because styled components in CSS and JS is so different. So let's say you know we're, we're back to our empty just regular app um, kind of container component here. Let's say that we have a button. Button, click me. You see it's over here. Doesn't do anything. Um, not very fun. And we're not using styled components. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And I already have this copied to the clipboard, but it's pretty basic. So creating another styled button, and but instead of div, so instead of div, I just did button. If you're noticing something here, any regular HTML element that you can type into the DOM or into JSX or anything like that, you can put right here on the back of styled.button. If you want more information about that, check the styled components documentation, but that is everything that you can put, or that's um, the beginning of everything that you can put here. Pretty much any regular HTML, HTML element, you can throw it right there. So you can do div, you can do span, you can do label, um, anything. So for now, we're gonna do button. We're going to make the text um, white with color of white, and we're gonna make the background color black. And uh, you know what, let's add something else here. Let's add a padding of 10 pixels just to make it 
a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. So just as we did before, so we've got some styles, we're creating a component, that sort of thing. And then, so I'm gonna pull in styled button because we created a React component. And I'm gonna give it some text, click me. And does it render? Yes, it does. And it replaces what we had before. Okay, cool. So, but this looks cool, right? But how do we get some interaction going? Because right now we can click this all day and it doesn't do anything. Um, and again, I know for me, this was so different that I still was kind of asking what sounded like dumb questions to myself of, is it really a component? Can I still do things like click handlers? Can I still pass in, um, can I still pass in methods and that sort of thing? Yes, all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and give it an on click handler. I'm gonna leave that completely open. Instead of doing an inline function here, I'm gonna go ahead and just give us uh, a function. Um, let's see, handle click, because that's an incredibly imaginative name. And we're gonna do an alert. Clicked it. Okay, and then handle click and handle click there. Um, all right, this should work as long as my JavaScript is correct. Okay, it rendered, we don't have any errors. Click me, and an alert pops up, it says clicked it. So you can also pa pass in things for on click. Um, if this was a label, you could also pass in things like on change, um, pretty much any baked in click handler. So what this means is that this isn't just an event handler, this is also a prop. So you can also pass in props. If we had a, um, if we have a much more complex component, you know, we could pass props down into it too. So I wonder, now that I've mentioned that, that we can pass props down to it, I wonder if we can pass a prop down to the styled component to change its color based on what we passed into it. Yes, we can. Um, all right, so how are we gonna do that? Well, let's see, first we want to pass in a prop. So let's just say custom color. And if I was doing this in production code, I would probably just name it color, but just try to drive the point home of which ones, you know, which pieces of this code are custom and which ones are there. I'm gonna give it a funny name. So custom color, um, and the, because CSS is funny, the color attribute is going to change our font color. So I'm going, since this is for our font, I'm going to do something crazy like uh, red because actually, you know, yellow because yellow and black, in my opinion, go a lot better together than yellow and red. Um, that's very subjective, but oh well. Okay, so we created a, or we're passing a custom color prop. We're giving it something. Um, we're passing, but anyway, uh, let's see, instead of that, because it's just a string. So we're passing a custom color prop into following just JSX, the styled button component, but we've got a template literal, it looks really weird. So how do we access this? Um, the same way, or almost the same way that we would for any other component, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of breeze through a little bit of this and then go back and explain things. All right, so we're gonna get rid of white, do the dollar sign, open brackets, access our props, and then we're going to say custom color because we passed in the custom color prop. And then we're gonna save that, and if everything is right, our text over here should change to yellow, what we passed in. Of course, given that this is a proper CSS color value. Um, oh, props is not defined. Okay, so a little bit of a mistake here. Um, what I had before was just props.customColor. Um, actually, what we need is a whole function here where we pull in props and we access custom color underneath props. Um, so this is like, this is very abbreviated syntax. Um, so if you're not sure of what's going on here, this is a, again, very abbreviated, very shorthanded um, full-on function where props is your parameter that's coming in and then we're accessing props.customColor and because the code is very shorthanded, we're just automatically returning the first um, the first thing that comes into play. Um, if this syntax is still strange to you, um, we're gonna pass in a parameter this way. We're gonna use the fat arrow syntax. 
we're going to open brackets just like you would inside of any other um, any other function and then we'll close the brackets have a return and we should see that this still does the exact same thing as what's already on the screen just like that if this still looks strange to you um, again using the fat arrow syntax but just kind of driving the point home that this is a regular function um, and you want to see just how you know can you have multi-line statements and that sort of thing yes you can do anything we can even do something so crazy as if you pass in yellow I really want it to be white instead to return us back to what we were and make a very confusing button to reproduce anywhere else or to reuse anywhere else so if props that custom color equals yellow um, return white actually yeah return white um, else return just whatever it is Let's see does that work yeah so we passed in yellow it equals yellow return white this is very contrived but the point that I'm trying to make is that you can do anything that you want here this is just JavaScript you have access and this is um, this is the really big benefit of styled components and really this is just one library for the whole paradigm of using CSS in JavaScript the what's really cool here is that you have complete full access to JavaScript inside of your style sheet or in, inside of your CSS styles and that's really what this kind of what you can kind of think of this is is that this you know color these few styles here are like an embedded style sheet inside of your component completely localized um, there's ways that you can kind of uh, you can you can kind of have competing styles but that gets into you know where you have other styles on the page that you don't control and you're competing for specificity and that sort of thing so if you're not in that type of scenario all of these styles are really local to the component that you have that you've put on the page exactly right here um, and so this right here is 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 the big win I've only very minimally you kind of crack the surface here um, there's a whole multitude of things that you can do with this uh, as far as creating reusable components where you don't have to rewrite your styles all the time um, you can have you know if you if you create if you want to control the colors or if you have a you're working from a complete UI library with um, standards and everything and you already have a complete set of you know a complete color palette a complete set of colors that you only want to work with but you don't want to deal with the hex values and the RGB values and the alpha values you don't want to have to keep copying pasting those you know you can do something where you set those up under some predefined variables and then you just pass those variables around so instead of white you know let's say that we had you know a const up here um, my special version of white you know and that was just a uh, you know I have no idea what what this color is um, that might not even be anything close to white um, but you know let's just say that we have that instead of passing around white or passing it or even you know even worse having to constantly throw this color around we can just say I want this humanly readable variable name I don't care what's underneath it and I want you to throw that around that's the benefit here the benefit is that you have highly modularized very much localized CSS that you can create these components and reuse them all across your code base this is not for everyone I'm not saying that, that CSS and JS is better than CSS modules definitely use what works for you what work you know use what is what is working and what works well inside of your code base um, but this is just another way to style your React applications. All right, I apologize about the lighting for this, but I wanted to take a second to dive in a little bit further, um, at least theoretically, beyond just the code demonstration for this video. Because CSS modules and CSS and JS and using other style sheets and that sort of thing, basically styling inside of React, but also to a certain extent inside of Vue or inside of Angular, that sort of thing, styling inside of these newer JavaScript frameworks um, it's completely changed. We have uh, we have new concerns that we have to think about, and we also have new possibilities that we didn't have before when we were just using regular, 
you know, HTML, JavaScript, and, and CSS, or or say it's like you know the older you know ASP ASP.NET and web forms, and you just had some code behind files or something like that. Um, we've got a little bit more or a lot more flexibility and a lot more tools, but at the end of the day, through all those technologies, even web forms, even the old stuff, what's happening in the browser still comes down to three things: you've got HTML, you've got CSS, and you've got JavaScript. Your HTML is the structure of the page. I know this is all very elementary, but I just want to reiterate. So your HTML, that's your DOM, that's the structure of your page. Your CSS is what those nodes, what those elements look like, how they're styled. You're not changing the structure, you're just changing what it looks like visually. And then your JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is special in that it can come back and touch each one of these, but your JavaScript is your interactivity and your memory management basically you know what the what the memory is doing and or you know how you're moving data around inside the browser you're not doing malloc and that sort of thing please don't leave that in the comments but anyway so you're still you're still manipulating html css and javascript regardless of how crazy the tools get so um keep that in mind um all right, so in theory, I've got some app here and I've got a couple of components. You know, let's just say that this is our, our browser window and I've got, you know, components one, two, and three. Um, so I'm gonna try to write on this. I apologize if this is kind of crazy. I'm just, um, I'm not gonna do this all the time, but I just thought that this was important to kind of break out the whiteboard. So we've got one and then let's just say that that's my component. And now let's go ahead and go with the, uh, the CSS and JS route or the styled components route. So let's do a .js. That's not quite an S, but oh well. Um, so .js, and then our styles are going to be inside of. And you saw what it you know was that crazy template literal stuff, and it was JavaScript, and you kind of had to just trust me that I was creating functions. So I'm just going to open brackets and throw our styles in there to represent all of that syntax. So there we go. We've got that in there. Now remember what I went through where I said okay you've got your predefined styles inside of your component and that's that's great that's wonderful um, but it also gave us the possibility since our CSS was now being manipulated directly by JavaScript um, we could even pass props in so if you wanted to overwrite the color override the color you could so we could pass in a color prop and that could be you know something if we wanted to change the size so say we had a button um, and we wanted you know, we wanted it to have a different font and a different color and, you know, basically pass in our own theme and have an animation and do crazy things and kick off other stuff. Um, you know, we could do that as well, but we wanted to never rewrite the whole button, just pass in props to change what it looks like. So we could do that sort of thing. And then we could also just say, you know what, screw that. Just let me pass in a whole theme. That's a sorry excuse for a curly brace. You know, just passing a whole theme. You know, we could even put inside of the logic that's handling you know, the styling for for the component. We could say, hey, if a theme is passed in, make sure that you apply the theme, but then make sure that you take special care around color and size, that you override color and size for the theme that was applied, which then overrides the styles that were already baked into my component. So there's a lot of programmability there, and you can also, whenever you want to reuse this component. All you're doing is you're just passing around this JavaScript file. You're just importing it somewhere else. You're never having to re-implement the re-implement the component unless you wanted to change the functionality or fundamentally change what that component does. So you're so you could argue that with CSS and JS or styled components, your code, your React code, becomes highly modular. It's just one more way to, to write highly modular code that can be reused across your entire code base. Now there are some drawbacks to this, but that's the advantage. All right, now let's move on to what it looks like if we're doing CSS modules. We want to do the same idea. So erase some of that. Okay, so we have my component. It's a JavaScript file, but we're doing CSS modules. So my components dot module, but I'm only going to write dot mod. We're going to use SCSS to try to get as much programmability as we can without leaving a style sheet. So SCSS. So we have two files. The problem being that remember what I said. You're still um, you're still manipulating. You're still writing JavaScript and CSS and HTML at the end of the day. 
Now our HTML and JavaScript is already in here inside of the inside of the React component via JSX. Um, but if we you know if we wanted to pass in a color prop to change the color, we can't really do that um, because we can't we can never um, we can never inject JavaScript into SCSS. Oh wait a second, I've got programmability inside of SCSS. What do you mean I can't do that sort of thing? What I mean is, the, when you're using this, the programmability that you have in order to do math functions to calculate the font size of something, all the stuff that you know um, that that SAS or you know SASE CSS allows you to do, you're limited to the interpreter. You're limited to the preprocessor that SCSS gives you. You're not using JavaScript. So if you want to do something, if you want to have a full, you know, built-in function, and yes, you have functionality built into SCSS that is borderline a function, but you can never pass from JavaScript directly into here, um, or at least you can't without doing something very hacky and you know, kind of something that's very not best practice. Not it's completely off the wall. I'm sure there's there's a way to do it, but anyway, whatever. Um, so you can't easily pass in JavaScript into your CSS styles. So if you want to, you know, reuse something, or if you want to pass in, you know, props um, into the component and just pass the same component around, you can't really do that the same way. You have to bake that logic directly into here. You have to say, okay, well, if the button is like this, or if I look like this, well, then you know, change things in here. What this also means is that any time that you want to reuse this somewhere else in the in the application you have to move both of those files around so you have to I'm just gonna MC for my comp you have to move a JavaScript file and an SCSS file somewhere else you have to rename it you know MC2 or MC2 um, yes you can just you know do an import and you know this import is gonna pass is gonna you know point to here and that sort of thing yes you can do that but your reusability now is down to you have to move multiple files around. Now, um, going through all this, I'm not trying to suggest that you know one is better than the other. I've seen plenty of situations where I would much rather have SCSS, especially when I'm working with an older code base and I have you know static CSS files that are just kind of there. They're not even SCSS. They're just CSS from a legacy code base. And I want to just move that over to my new React application. A really easy way to do that is just use the CSS modules functionality that's built into Create React app, dump that CSS in there, and just start using it somewhere else. You know, start using it and cleaning it up later on. Um, that is that is where I would all I have a hard time getting away from that um, because CSS and JS is very it's a very heavy-handed approach. If you're doing some greenfield development and you can afford to just write all of your CSS inside of it, um, it, it works really well and you do create um, very modular code, but it does add another layer of complexity because now you have JSX and you know CSS and JS and the regular JavaScript for the whole component all inside of one file. Now it's great because you can pass everything around inside of one package but it's you, it's an extra layer of complexity. So um, I just want to make sure that I went over this. Again, I wanted to end this one the same way that I ended the code demonstration and that I don't say any of this to say that one way is better than the other. These are simply two ways. Use what's best and try to, try to work through the rest of it. All right, thanks for checking out the video. That's been CSS and JS along with styled components. Um, if you liked the video or if you didn't like it, please let me know down below. Um, please remember also um, hit the subscribe button. That is a really big help to me. The channel is growing uh, quite a bit faster than I expected it to, but still small, modest channel. Um, also, if any of you are on GitHub, you may have seen something going around with the GitHub Sponsors uh, program. Right now, that program is currently in beta. Um, I have a sponsorship profile. I'll leave a link to it down in the, in the, uh, in the description below. Um, check it out. I only have one tier set up right now just for one dollar, just helping me keep the lights on. Um, I really don't want to set up multiple tiers and, and really over promise on things that, that I really can't deliver on. Um, 
please keep in mind guys this channel um, anything that I include down below and the sponsorship profile with the github and all that sort of thing I'm doing this on the side of a full-time job um, so that's why there's also been a lapse in some of the videos lately um, another thing that I want to make sure I include is I am right now I'm in the middle of a big redesign slash refactor for my my blogging platform um, it's something that uh, I built it quite a while back and the code just has not aged very well even though it's I've only had it for a couple years so I've been in the middle of we're kind of rebuilding that um, hopefully what I'm trying to do is through each video try to have an easy way for me to put up just a very short article so that if anyone doesn't want to consume this content in video format or if you just you know you like the video but then you want to re you know just reference an article instead of watching the whole video give that to you as well um, so that's gonna be coming pretty soon um, you know just be looking for that in the in the uh, description sections on, underneath the videos in the near, in the near future um, but anyway if you liked it or if you didn't like it, please let me know down below. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.